And here they come. Well, no strangers to podium matches. Anton Bulyev of Russia, we've seen him. He seems excited. Yeah, we've seen him on top of the podium this season. And goes up against Sergio Pandy. Now, often we see uh, if an athlete from a certain country gets a medal or performs really well, it can drive on their teammates. Yeah, it might be that he's inspired now by his uh, almost the same named uh, teammate. So, if he can just keep his calm uh, like he normally does, I think he can uh, make this a really good match against another great archer, Anton Bulayev. Well, you can see a few drops of rain on the camera lens there. The overhead camera gives us a great view of uh, the athletes. What's funny is that Sergio Pagni is left-handed, so he'll uh, look directly at his opponent. And I'm sure he's used to it, but it might affect Anton a bit. It's a bit of an unconventional technique that he uh, practices. In, uh, where he uses a wrist release, which is already uh, unconventional, to say the least, at the international circuit. And then he anchors really high. Sergio uses a, a wrist release, but it's a, a kind of wrist release where you release a button instead of press a button. And it's really uh, uh, personal for him. He really likes it. But most archers anchor on their jaw, whereas Anton anchors on his cheek. So it's, uh, it's a lot higher and it looks a bit odd, but uh, it works really well for him. Starts off with a perfect score. So you can see how his hand is almost up to his eye, so as high as it is. Just dropping a point there, the Russian. So high scores again in this gold medal match. Only one point drop between the two archers. Consistency, key to the game, as we've said time and time again. Well, this is a, a good example of why. You drop one point, you go into uh, trail your opponent. Yeah, can be that close. And we often see that the uh, bows of the uh, archers are tailored to specific styles, but what's remarkable about uh, Anton Bulio's bow is that it's completely unremarkable. Yeah. It's just a black bow. It is. It has some red accents, and I think what's remarkable about his bow, but I'm not completely sure, I think it's... Uh, a hunting model so it's it's originally sold as a hunting bow but he made it into his uh, target setup a good shot of the uh, cogs there as Billy F draws to start the second Lisa! end and hits of the spider I'm now in doubt by the way about the hunting part so don't shoot me if I'm wrong just a tiny little bit of movement there. Yeah, just like that, it's all tied up again. So. Well, whilst we work in the five ends of three arrows per archer, it is an accumulative score in compound archery, so you can fight back on the trailing position. He's not very happy with that shot, but he managed to make it work. Well, 
also remarkable about Anton's bow is that he has an amazing stack of weight on his side stabilizer. I don't know if we're going to see that in this end still, but you can see how there's probably a kilo of weight on his uh, side rod. The reason you want to do that is, uh, well, basically it's just inertia. If you have a lot of weight on your bow, it won't move as fast, so you can control the movement a little better. The thing is, it's difficult for your shoulder to hold up all the weight and still have control. So, uh, for a lot of archers, you try to find a sweet spot. But is it unusual to have so much weight on, as you call it, the sidebar? Is it, does it not mean that you're leading one way? Um, it could mean that your bow is urged to uh, lean a bit to the left, or in his case to the left, because his side roll is on the left. Uh, but that can also be preference, because it's uh, often easier to hold a bow steady and straight when you have to hold it there, than when it holds itself there and it's just wiggling. So uh, some people prefer a perfect, perfectly balanced bow, so if they hold it, it keeps perfectly level and other people want to have a little more weight so they have to force it into being level so they can have it there um, by force. And that's why each bow is effectively an extension of the, the body or the arm of the, the archers and very much tailored to each archer's preferences. Ilyev trailing by the single point still. Shoot first in this third end. <laughs> There's a little skull on the stabilizer of Sergio Pagni. I wonder if that's to intimidate his opponent. He's just drifted out into the air. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's been very intimidating. Yeah, it's marked as a nine. Yeah, I think it just got the line. Okay, it's хорош. Good recovery. That's it. Didn't get to his head. Okay. Sergio just came back from India, I think, where he coached the Indian compound team ahead of the Asian Games to see if he could uh, bring them some extra uh, knowledge. And it worked, didn't it? Uh, I think they got two silvers. A couple of silver medals in Jakarta. Competition is still actually going on at uh, uh, the Asian Games, but I think the archery is all done and dusted. Yeah. Well, we're level here in uh, the Nika for these uh, European championships. Gold medal here, but you can see that uh, even the coach is having to uh, dry the scope because of the rainfall. Maybe he can wipe the camera lens as well <laughs> while he's at it. Well, range is clear. You can see that the official has also put his rain jacket on. It's not raining too heavily, so it shouldn't be too distracting. No, I think it's just annoying, that's all. Stop. I don't, don't think there's many archers that prefer to shoot in rain. Yes, we we'll start the fourth end. Okay. The scores yes. level. Uh, Penny shoots first. Okay. It's Both archers only have one arrow that's really far outside of the tent. Uh, Penny being one that's that had more red on it than yellow. It's just out. Nine. Really, I've had a high nine that was also Jimmy. close to the eight, but not quite. Um, for the rest, they're still pretty close to the ten, so the group is not terrible. Just drifting out and up to the left. 
He could have capitalized on the nine that Sergio shot, but that maybe got to him. Well, he's got another chance now. A maximum ten that will put Bulyev into the lead going into the last end. But he also, well, no, he does get the 10, so he has gone into the lead. He, took a, he missed the first opportunity, he took the second, and he's taken the lead at a crucial time. The tables have turned. Pressure is right on now. But like I said before, trailing with one point before the last end is not always terrible because you can put the pressure on and you can sometimes overcome your opponent. Yeah, you shoot first, and you, you get that opportunity to put the pressure on. Yeah. So especially in a team match where you have six arrows to make up one point, but also in an individual match where you get three arrows for one point, you just have to make sure that you shoot really well. I think the British team was showing off their medals in the background just now. Well, they're allowed to. They did get the uh, gold medal a little bit earlier on in the uh, men's team event. Interestingly, Anton just checked his arrows and there was a damaged vein and he still put them back in his competition yeah. slot so I think he's going to shoot the, the damaged vein anyway well it's worked out for him so far yeah. so this is it for the compound session three arrows left in the men's gold medal match you can so see so. The, the British people in the background pointing at their medals yeah Chief. Drifting off to the right, a little shake of the head. Yeah, he knew that he need to, needed to put some pressure on. Sometimes having the lead can have pressure of its own, not for Anton Bilyev. So Anton will not only have to miss the tendering, but he has to miss it twice or miss it big if uh, Sergio still wants a shot at the gold medal. Yes! And no chance of that. Yeah. Yeah. has put all the pressure on Sergio Pangi. All he can do is try and score another 10. He does get the 10, but... Uh, what are the odds that Anton is going to miss the whole gold? Well, miss the nine, yeah, it's not uh, not lightly. This for the gold medal at the European Championships. Yeah! Oh, and it's absolutely superb from Anton Bulyev. He shot absolutely spectacularly, only dropping three points throughout the whole of the gold medal match. And Anton Bulyev takes home the European title for Russia. Well, you can't say uh, that uh, Sergio Pan uh, shot badly. He got a 145 out of a potential 150. That's not a bad score. It isn't, but in this uh, in this field, I think you need more than a 145 to win. <laughs> well. An interesting shot there, looking down the range. And distracted potentially by the big screen, but not this man. Sergio being left-handed was looking the other way, so I don't think the screen affected him any. So an unorthodox approach to uh, his archery, but uh, if you can shoot like that time and time again, then the medals are going to come your way thick and fast. Sergio Pani will be uh, happy with a silver medal, although it's uh, bittersweet, isn't it, because you get to the gold medal match, and of course you want to uh, take that chance and take the European title, but... Uh, he was up against this amazing Russian, and uh, he shot superbly well. Spasiba, Anton Bulyev. So confirmation of the results here. The Russian was spectacular, taking the European title back home. Anton Bulyev beat Sergio Pagni of Italy, and it was Federica Pagnoni who took the bronze, beating Pierre-Julien Deloche in the playoff match. And uh, very, very shortly, we will have uh, 
a medal ceremony for those men. And uh, there is our podium. You can see the umbrellas are out, even with the officials. But that's it for uh, our compound session here in Lignica. But good news, everyone. It's afternoon of recurve archery coming up and uh, almost exactly the same format for the competition. We'll start here at 2.30 local time. And uh, we're going to have... Uh, the Italians out going for uh, three team gold medals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which is incredible. That's uh, incredible recurve archery from the Italian teams. Uh, but uh, first up, we will have the medal ceremony for the men's individual compound archery here at the European Archery Championships in this fantastic city of Lignica and let me tell you if you've never been to this part of Poland it's stunning it's a hidden treasure and uh, the World Archery Federation have put on this spectacular event right in the heart of this fairy tale city That's a nifty use of the uh, Russian flag there. Yeah, that's probably the coolest rain jacket I've seen today. The rain just dripping very, very slightly, but it has managed to hold off here on a day that, uh, well, threatened big rain showers. So it's time for the... Uh, compound archers to pack up their bows and head home. Of course, some of uh, the archers here will be heading to Cortina, and in fact, the officials as well will be heading to Cortina, where the uh, field archery world championships will be taking place uh, next week, I think. Yeah, that should be exciting as well. I hope it doesn't rain as much as uh, today, but I cannot promise the archers everything. <laughs> Mistrzostw Europy w Legnicy, ceremonia dekoracji. Widzieliśmy fantastyczną walkę o brązowy medal i o złoty medal w rukach bloczkowych mężczyzn. Także czekamy jeszcze, jeśli tylko będzie to możliwe za chwilę. Well, moving from uh, Legnicy to uh, Cortina. Uh, the world of archery does take place in some fantastic locations around the globe. I've got to say though, this is the coldest archery event I've ever been to. Well. You haven't been in archery very long. <laughs> <laughs> How much does that affect uh, certainly your drawing hand when it's so cold outside? Yeah, you have to make sure that you keep your hands warm and uh, I would say supple. And uh, if you, if it gets really cold, your hands get stiff and, and it gets painful to release, especially with recurve archery. Um, and you have to imagine compound bows normally don't have a... Uh, a wooden grip that my bow has, for instance. So they just grab the bare aluminum, uh, which is obviously very cold if it's not warm out. Uh, and then their release is normally made out of uh, brass, which is also cold. So yeah, that doesn't help your coordination at all. So you want to make sure that you get the the temperature of your material that you want. To yeah, well, it certainly hasn't affected uh, the archers here too much. We've seen some unbelievable scoring, in particular, I have to say, from uh, Federico Pagnoni, who picked up uh, the bronze medal here in the individual. He shot an exceptional bronze medal match. So now it's time to present those medals. Well, we've said what a beautiful city this is, and uh, there is the city's mayor who will be presenting the medals here for the uh, individual men's compound archers. Medal bronzowy. Representant Włoch. Bronze medal, representing Italy. Federico Medal 
Srebrny, representant Włoch. Silver medal, representing Italy. Sergio Pogli. Well, there he is, Sergio Pagni, collecting the silver medal with his teammate in the bronze medal position. So two Italian medals in the last compound event. Gold medal, European champion, representing Russian Federation, Anton. Well, Anton Bullier shot so well in that gold medal match. He is the deserving European champion of 2018. Unorthodox technique. But boy, it worked here today. Panie i panowie, proszę o powstanie do hymnu narodowego Rosji. So now it's time for the national anthem of the Russian Federation. Absolutely brilliant session of compound archery uh, with bags of medals presented uh, here in Legnica. But that's the end of uh, our compound action here and confirmation that Anton Buliev picked up the European title, beating Sergio Pagni in that men's individual final with uh, Federico Pagnoni picking up the bronze. It was a good finishing discipline for the Italians and they'll be back this afternoon uh, when we switch over to uh, the Olympic discipline of recurve archery. Italy will be contending for all three of the team gold medals a little bit later on today. But here we've seen uh, Turkey take the uh, women's individual, Great Britain take the men's individual, France taking the compound mixed team event, and uh, the gold medal matches for both the men's and the women's individual were absolutely spectacular. We'll be back in about an hour for compound afternoon.